a bit of a relief to be actually get a pre-season injury under your belt. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, feeling really good at the moment, so I'm definitely grateful for that. Um, I've had my challenges, obviously, uh, over the last few years at the club. Um, had a really complicated back injury uh, over 2020, um, but put some really hard work in and um, starting to come to fruition now, which is which is really great. And the season's approaching, and I feel uh, really prepared to to get going and have a big 2021. What was what was the back injury? Talk us through what it was and made it complicated. Yeah, so it was a stress fracture um, in my pars L5 region of my back. Um, I guess what makes it complicated is that being a stress injury, um, the biggest part of it is management and how you return to training. Um, it's not as simple as just it heals and then you're fine. Um, so even now, it's just important for me to manage um, my load in training um, and the, the medical staff and strength and conditioning team have been fantastic with getting that right now. Obviously, it was challenging last year because it was hard to find that perfect um, I guess level of, of training, not doing too much or too little. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a vigorous game, and I need to be um, fit and strong to be able to go out there and play. So, just finding that balance. Um, but I've learned a lot about my body over the last year, and I uh, feel like I'm in a really good place now. You did a hamstring as well, I think, just before. Like, so, you're coming back into the scratch matches last season. And the hamstring was that related to you back as well? Uh, yeah, it was a minor hamstring, just like a three week hammy. So, um, it was just up in Cairns at our second harbour, just come off a flight. Um, was just a bit unfortunate, but um, didn't impact me too much. So um, put that past me in a few weeks and have been feeling good ever since. You talk about managing it and, and stress loads and training and the fact that footing's vigorous. Is there a sense of anxiety that comes with coming back into play and, and that heavy contact that comes with Yeah, I think when you haven't played for so long, it's certainly... Um, like the mental side of the game is really important and um, you know your confidence can fluctuate as you're coming back but for me as soon as I get out there across the line start training my mind is completely switched on to training and I, I don't have that stress or anxiety or anything like that and, and the confidence comes back pretty quickly so um, ask anybody with long-term injuries they'd probably say the same thing um, but once you're out there um, you're good to go. What sorts of things do you do with your, for your mental health? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, JL's really big on the mental side of the game. Um, so for me, meditation's a big thing. I focus a lot on breathing. I'm doing a lot of reading at the moment um, about breathing and whether that's, if there ever is time to stress anxiety, the breathing really settles you down. Um, and even just to stay focused when you're training um, and in games, if you get off task, um, those relaxing breaths and then trigger words and things like that just get you switched back on. So big focus on that. I think that's neglected in footy and in a general sense, that's sort of started to be focused too much on the physical and all of that. I think it's trending that way a lot more now. Uh, I've only been at the club for a few years now, um, so I'm not sure what it was like here 10 years ago um, from that point of view. Um, but certainly since JL's come in, there's been more of a focus on it. Um, and I think personally years ago, I didn't buy into it as much when I was younger. Um, you know, you're sort of ignorant and naive when you're younger, but you, you go up and you think physical is the biggest thing. I came in to the club at 68 kilos and I thought the most important thing was to put weight on and get strong. Um, and I've soon realised that it's not the most important thing and um, whatever it is that makes you perform at your best is the most, yeah, is the most important thing. So that mental side, um, to be switched on for as long uh, during the game as possible, it's going to give you the best chance of playing as well as you can. So, how did you find training in the uh, in the quarantine group when you got back, and how was it finally integrating with the rest of the group? Yeah, no, it was actually really good. So, we had the the graveyard shift of two to five pm on a um, Perth summer, which, especially when the wind picks up out here, it's it's uh, pretty challenging. But no, we had actually quite a decent, like a big group um, who travelled back from Victoria. Um, we had Boydie and Joel Corey, uh, who were new coaches of ours, who were there as well so it was a great chance to bond with them um, and the intensity of training was just as good as uh, if not better of, um, as training with the main group so um, that was really positive we got a lot out of it and it made that transition back into the group a bit easier um, and yeah obviously exciting to get back with everybody and obviously with the restrictions of last year and training in small groups it's been 
uh, really enjoyable to train with everybody. And where do you feel like you are in the in small forward pecking order or could your role change from, from when you last played in 2019? Yeah, I think small forward is still my, my role. It's, my, it's, it's where I play my best footy. Um, I think I am um, can be versatile in pushing up the ground a bit more, but um, I'm just trying to become as much of an expert in my role as possible. Um, we've got a large group of small forwards and we're just starting to um, gel together and, and try and build that chemistry and um, with our tools as well. Um, so we're doing as much match simulation training together as possible. Um, and it's really ex exciting. Spots are open for grabs, so the competition's really good. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to, to train hard and get back in there, um, play some footy. How about some of the draft days? Has there been any that have particularly impressed you, Josh? Tracy's been talked up a lot. Are there many, many others that have been going well on the track? Yeah, uh, all the boys have been going well. There's a couple in rehab, uh, so we haven't seen them out in the track as much yet. Uh, Josh, uh, he's 18, but he's built like he's at least 26. Um, he's been going fantastic, and obviously down forward, I've been doing a fair bit of work with him. So, um, yeah, I mean, sky, uh, sky's the limit for any of them, but um, really optimistic about Josh coming and playing some footy early, just because he seems um, quite ready to go in terms of the, the physical aspect and. Um, even his skills and stuff are, um, have been really impressive. Um, Joel been working with as well, down forward, um, the young fella. So um, trying to teach him more of the game plan and get him um, ready to go as well. And um, he's got that uh, special knack around goals, um, which is which is cool to watch. So even I'm learning something off him, which is cool. And you would have spent a lot of time in the rehab group with guys like Alex Pierce and, and Joel Hamling. How are they going? And I guess the spirit's not pretty high around the group to have such a, a small rehab group. Yeah, no, really good. I uh, spent a lot of time with Alex and Joel last year. Alex, um, or both of them, but Alex in particular, um, his ability to stay such a great leader when he's in rehab, stay really positive, um, work really hard every session. It can be pretty gruelling just doing cross training uh, three or four times a week when everyone else is training. Um, so he's been a real inspiration for me. And, and Joel obviously has had his challenges as well. Um, but has trained super hard and to his credit has got back now with the group and it's awesome to see and he's a massive lift for everybody. Jesse going in terms of that forward set up, is there much of a change in how you're sort of looking to, to set up heading into the season and the work that you do with you guys? Yeah, so structure doesn't change too much. Um, in terms of our game plan, like we've tweaked a couple of things, but um, Jesse's obviously gone, but we've got Josh in and, and we've got other options. Brennan Cox can swing forward. Um, I'm not sure what JLo's thinking specifically about how we'll, we'll line up with talls and smalls, but it doesn't change how we train, how we'll set up. With the breeding you were talking about before, is it like a, like a certain breeding practice? Like I know a few of the cricketers employ a certain sort of breeding style. Is it something particular that you're doing? Yeah, it's, it's more from a, um, I guess not so much a performance of how you breathe when you're exercising, but more of a you know, because you get your heart rate down, relax, um, and you sort of, my breathing I do to a bit of a count, um, so a certain amount of like a, a count of breathing coming in, pausing, out, pausing, um, and it can be really beneficial. And just trying to open up your nasal pathways and, um, yeah. Is it a certain discipline that has a certain name or anything like that, or is it just something you've done from a few of Yeah, no specific name. Um, just from reading a few books, getting some advice from different people, some of the experts here at the club and elsewhere, and and just kind of doing my own thing with it, I guess. How challenging was it when you got so a long-term injury? You know, like the you knew that the, the spot, the place and spot, going to be reduced and stuff like that. Is there an anxiety about like where what your future is going to be like? I guess it's, it certainly creates more uncertainty. Um, we're here to perform. We're here to play. That's what we get paid to do. Um, so when you're not doing it, it's, it's challenging and. Um, when you have such a, a long-term injury, um, yeah, there's more uncertainty about uh, what might come. But um, I, I don't try and focus too much on the future like that. I think if you start thinking that way, um, it only creates more negative self-talk in your head and confidence can go down. So really focus on just the now, doing the best I can. Um, I'm contracted to the end of this year, so I um, haven't even thought about next year and what it might hold, just focusing on yeah, doing as best I can right now. Men 
Yeah, um, I heard about this. Yeah, just recently. Um, from my standpoint, uh, the health of, of players, not just for now, but the future, is so important. Um, and obviously, I think all clubs have been very supportive, which is why the AFL has, has made a move on it. Um, and yeah, I, to me, it, it seems like a certainly a reasonable um, point of action from them. And um, I've had concussions when I was younger and didn't understand the impacts back then. Um, but we certainly, it's, it's a growing field of research and we're starting to find out a bit more. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, it's a smart move from the AFL and from a football club point of view, we're very supportive of it. Such a tricky injury to sort of monitor and treat and be aware of when full recovery has happened. I mean, is it, is it kind of good in a sense that, you know, say something happens in a team or corner or something like that, it's taken out of the player's hands in that respect? Yeah, I mean, it's a hard thing to diagnose. Even as a player, you might get a knock and, and you're really not sure what's going on with yourself. So having that conservative approach, I think is smart.